Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to this lesson on problem solving techniques. In this lesson, we're going to cover simple moving averages. So our objectives with this lesson are as follows. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. First, define what is meant by a simple moving average. Then we're going to use a simple moving average to make predictions. We're also going to distinguish between forecast and actual demand. And finally, we're going to use simple moving averages as a visualization tool to look at trends over time. So we're on to the last section of our problem solving techniques curriculum. Uh, section 8 is about predictive techniques. And in this section, we have two uh, problem solving tools, a simple moving average and a weighted moving, av moving average. So I should say at this point that this lecture uh, is on simple moving averages is actually quite similar to the one on weighted moving averages. The formula that you see here is the main difference between the two techniques. So let's take a look at our inspiring quote, this one from Peter Drucker, a former a management consultant, educator, educator and author, and he once wrote, trying to predict the future is like trying to drive down a country road at night with no lights while looking out the back window. So Peter Drucker uh, was telling us that, you know, trying to predict your future is not easy, it's very difficult and possibly uh, not a good idea to do. But we can have a tool like a simple moving average to help us make some predictions. So first of all, what is a simple moving average? Well, it's a, about one of the simplest time series analysis tools that we can have, and it's a, a very simple uh, method of forecasting. Not a hugely accurate one, but it is a method, method of forecasting nonetheless. We can use it for to look for patterns over a period of time. As the name time series analysis suggests, we are analyzing data over time. It can help us to remove variations and, and make predictions, and it's also very, very useful for smoothing data. So there are two types, as I say, the simple and weighted moving average. So we're going to look at the simple moving average here first. So let's say we want to estimate demand uh, for a future time period. We, 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 this could be sales figures, it could be stock levels and so on. We, 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 we need to have some estimate of what the demand for a future time period might be. And we're going to do this in the simple moving average by averaging the demand for a number, uh, three to seven, of most recent time periods. So for example, let's say I've got actual data for January, February, and March. That's, this could be sales figures or stock levels or whatever. And I'd like to be able to use these figures to predict, well, well, what stock levels am I going to lead for April? Or what sales figures can I expect to get in April? And can I use these three time periods here? And the answer is with simple moving averages is yes. So let's take a look at how that's done. So I've put my three months across the top up here. So I've got my three, um, this is a three point uh, simple moving average because I'm using three months here. And so what I want to be able to do is, okay, how can I use these three figures for January, February and March and get an estimate for April? And in a simple moving average, all we do is we take uh, for a three point moving average, the three most time periods and note I've written them backwards here. Uh, it's not that important here, but in a weighted moving average, it is very important. And you'll also see in the, in the formula in a moment, uh, how how this meaningful this can be. So I've taken my three most uh, recent periods. The most recent is March. The second most recent is February. And the third most recent is January. Add the three of them together and divide by three to get a simple average. So then let's see how we can use this. So I've taken that same formula with the months in it and I've now translated it into the actual formula we use for a simple moving average. So this again is a three point moving average here. If we had four months of periods to, to uh, predict data, we would have a four point moving average and divide, add them together and divide by four. The same if we had five time periods, we would add them together and divide by five to get the average. So it's a simple average or mean of a set of time periods. In our case here, it's three points. So in our formula here in the bottom, the F stands for the forecasted demand and the A stands for the actual demand. So the forecasted demand for time T, and that time T is April in our example here, that's equal to the actual demand for T minus one, which is March. So now you can see why I put these backwards in the formula. So the most recent time period is T minus one. We add that to the actual for the second most recent time period, which is A T minus two plus the uh, third most recent time, which is t minus three, add those three figures together, divide by three, and we will get a forecasted amount for the current time period. So let's use some data to get an example of how, what we mean by all of this. Uh, here's some uh, data that I've made up uh, based on sales figures for the uh, 12 months of the year 2022. So all these figures here listed in the right-hand column, and uh, they are sales figures. 
And what I'd like to be able to do is use these to make a prediction for January 2023, or any month period following on from that. So let's take a look at how our formula breaks down. The actual demand, A, for the time periods is the actual figures recorded. Okay, So at the end of each month, we note the sales figure, and then that becomes the actual demand for that month. And then the forecasted demand, F, is the one in our case here, what we are trying to cook up or calculate for January 2023. So let's stretch these figures out a little bit and insert a new column where I'm going to insert my three-point moving averages. In this case, it's monthly data, so it's a three-month moving average. Now here's my uh, standard formula up here at the top. My forecasted uh, for time, t, is the actual for t minus 1 plus actual for t minus 2 plus actual for t minus 3 divided by 3. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm not going to start with January. I'm going to start with April So because I want to take a look at, at the at trend over the time period here using a moving average. So in this cell here that I'm highlighting now with, my, with the red dot, I want to do the calculation for the predicted demand uh, for April. So then the forecast for time t, that's April, is equal to these three figures here added together and divided by 3. So let's see where the figures come from. We know from our formula that the actual t minus 1 is the first value. So actual t minus 1 is, in this case, the value for March, 9,433. And we pop that into the formula here. The second value, 6,892, is t minus 2. And the third value, 8,938, is the value for January, t minus 3. So I simply add those together, divide them by 3, and we get 8,421. So I put that then into my formula, or into my table, 8,421. And remember, this is a three-point moving average. If I wanted to do four or five point, uh, we'd have to extend the formula to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that formula all the way down to the, the rest of the way here, so that I've got the same calculations, and each time the uh, t minus 1, t minus 2, and t minus 3 is moving down a row at a time. So here we have um, our 8,421 figure for April. And the figure 9,005 for May is made up of the three previous figures here. So we can see those three values there for February, March, and April are added together and divided by three to give us 9,005. And so on all the way down until we get to our figure of 10,424 is the uh, forecasted value for January 2023. Here's the calculation on the right-hand side. We can see T minus 1 is 11,055. So that's the figure for December, the previous month. T minus 2 is 10,813, which is November. For the, and then the last one here, T minus 3, is 9,405, which is the figure for October. So when I add those three figures there together that I'm circling now, uh, and divide them by 3, we get a result of 10,424. So based on my simple moving average, I'm making the prediction that the uh, sales figures for January 2023 will be 10,424 dollars or euro or, or whatever. Now let's visualize some of this data. So at the same data as I had on the previous spreadsheet uh, listed over here, I've got the actual sales figures and then my moving average straight fig figures. So my first chart here is the chart for the actual data. So you can see it goes from January all the way down to December. There's no figure for January here because I'm only plotting what's in this column on the left-hand side. So the actual sales figures we can see, they're going up and down uh, over a period of time. When I use a similar technique then to plot the three-month moving average, the first thing we notice is we've got three values are missing here because we needed to use up three values to make the first prediction for April. So there are no values for January, February, and March, and that's why in our predicted sales chart we've got the lines down here. So it's really from April onwards here that we can see these data. And we can see the effect of the three-month moving average. It's actually smoothed out the figure. So it's simple moving averages and time series analysis tools like this are often used to smoothen out the data. And that gives you a trend over time, avoiding sharp peaks and troughs that you see on the actual sales data at the top. So you can make a comparison there and look at these over a time period. But let's take a look at a more elaborate example. Uh, this is the uh, closing stock price in dollars for Facebook for the year 2021. And I've downloaded these data uh, from uh, Yahoo Finance. They're uh, freely available there. And I've used Excel to plot uh, the closing price from the 1st of January to the 31st of December over the year 2021. 
And you can see that it's up and down all the time. There's some general trends upwards and then downwards a little bit and then a stabilization. Uh, but I want to use a moving average to smoothen this curve out a lot because it is very much peaks and troughs in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a five point moving average. And the red dots dotted line here represents a five point moving average. In other words, I've taken five periods, added the stock price together for the five and divided by five to give me the next forecasted period. And I've moved that on for the entire year. And you can see that the red dotted line is a little bit smoother than the blue line, which is the actual data. So that's a five point moving average. And I can extend this and let's take a look and see what would happen if it was a 15 point moving average. And this gives the overall trend a little bit clearer. You can see, first of all, we lose 15 values here on the left hand side because we need 15 values to, cal to calculate the first forecasted value. And we can see then uh, over that period of time, uh, the, the red dots represent a much, much more smoothed set of data. And this can be useful for analyzing uh, things over a period of time. So you might have a lot of fluctuation, but uh, when you're looking to solve problems, you might want to see the overall trend and a simple moving average can be very, very useful for this. So in the assignment for this uh, lesson here, I'm going to get you to do something similar to the Facebook chart that we just saw. I'd like you to create your own stock chart and uh, at Yahoo Finance or wherever you uh, get your financial data from, uh, at Yahoo Finance, you can download uh, sets of data into Excel uh, for any specific time period that you wish to choose. So if you want to do one year or six months or two years, you can do that. And you can vary this, but I'm going to get you to uh, create a five point moving average and a 10 point moving average and make predictions using both as we have done in this lesson, and also to visualize and compare five point and 10 point moving averages, or if you want to do other values in there as well, you can. So more about that in the lesson on assignment. So in summary, a simple moving average is a basic time series technique for making predictions. A simple moving average, simply what it does is it averages the demand for a number, three to seven usually, or more as we have seen, of the most recent time periods. For a three-point moving average, which we've done in our example, the forecasted time, um, FT, is calculated by taking the average of the three most recent actual times, AT minus 1, AT minus 2, and AT minus 3. And finally, moving averages can be used to visualize trends over time. So that's how simple moving averages work. I hope you found this video useful.